Ian Fletcher was head of the Olympic uh, Deliverance Commission. And since then, since the, the triumph of which he was a part, he became very much the go-to man for any corporate firefighting uh, and for indeed team building and, uh, you know, in, in a, in a, in a pan-functional way. Uh, and it was only a matter of time before the BBC, which had been offered a lot of learning opportunities in recent years, uh, reached out uh, for a new head of values. And uh, Ian was the, was the man for the job. I mean, there was a, a fantastic team that were, were at the ODC, uh, organising the Olympics and there's a very different team now here within the BBC but certain uh, similarities occur in that there's a lot of people with tremendous skill sets uh, some of which are brought to bear on the management structure itself uh, some of which are slightly absent but it's a great opportunity to, for Ian to re-meet and recalibrate his relationship with Siobhan Sharp for instance uh, from Perfect Curve who has been brought in unbeknown to Ian to uh, assess the BBC's direction in a brand sense. And so uh, she and her team from Perfect Curve are, are up to their old tricks. If there's one word that I want us to take with us on the journey and to set the tone for everything we do, that word is confidence. Confidence. Brilliant. Sure. Christ. There are going to be challenges ahead, of course there are, but we are fortunate enough to be sitting at the centre of the greatest broadcasting organisation, arguably one of the greatest ideas in the world. BBC. BBC. Ian meets some new characters in, in this new post. Uh, particularly, uh, there are some significant characters like uh, Anna, who is head of output at the BBC, whose really default setting uh, is the word no. Anna, might it be worth thinking about Britain's tastiest village? No. Now you're talking. I'm sorry. Well, I just mean if it's a new show we've got coming through anyway. The fact is, village is appointment to view television. But I mean, might it be worth considering for a moment? No. No, OK, right. No, it's not. OK, so we can be confident about that and take that straight off the list of possible solutions to worry about. Yes. So that's all good. Cool. And so we move on. Brilliant. Then you have a wonderful intern, the well-meaning, but uh, perhaps slightly out of his depth, uh, Will. Um, who uh, the, the main thing about Will is that he's not really being paid much and doesn't really know what he's doing here, but uh, he does carry my bike around quite a lot, so that's very helpful. Actually, like an intern? Oh, right, I see. Yeah. What does that involve exactly? Yeah. Say again? You want to end up working in this area eventually? What? You mean like, like it's a job? Well, yes. Well, yeah, cool. Yes. Sixth floor. We have the extremely efficient um, Tracy Pritchard, um, who is uh, first and foremost a uh, very skilled communications officer, and second, but equally foremost, Welsh. I'm not being funny or anything, but this is like finding a spot on your what's it. Brilliant. Better to deal with it now than ignore it and see what happens. In the first episode, really, I think the defining message really is how to find a desk. Um, because of this wonderful uh, open plan, uh, hot desking principle that the BBC has, of uh, really just not allowing you anywhere to sit down for more than five minutes. Uh, it does keep the, the, the company literally, the corporation literally on its toes. Um, and Ian is very keen to get across the fact that his office door is always open. Um, the only downfall being there is no office. I, mean, I, I don't know, is this something you'd want to be across in terms of values, uh, Ian? Yes. I'm just thinking. No, absolutely. Because if anything, it's probably more a values yes. issue, you know, rather than no, yeah. rather than anything else. Yes, no, I mean, yes, absolutely. Good, good. So I should probably just mention that to Tony this afternoon. Uh -huh. Okay, great, good. Oh, this is all going terribly well. I think as with 2012, which uh, was obviously set against the backdrop of the Olympics, it wasn't really about satirising the Olympics. It was really satirising management structure and management speak and all the pitfalls of a team trying to do uh, something en masse when actually everyone's sort of passing the buck and perhaps promoted to positions that they aren't really fully qualified to inhabit. And I think the same flavour is there in W1A. We're not uh, deriding the BBC, but we are you know, having an, an interesting look at the way that some decisions are reached, uh, which range, as I say, from sort of hot desking to uh, you know the way programmes are put together. But I think those... I think the characters resonate through other organisations. This could just as easily perhaps be within the NHS or, or even elements of Whitehall, I would imagine. Um, you know, the risks that are involved when you bring a, a team of potential incompetence together. Great. So, yes, no, Anna, I was just thinking, is there something we might be able to find for Sally Wingate that might actually... Right, yes, good. Snog it. No. Snog, marry, avoid. Well, yes, or... I so love that show. Yes, or, I don't know, some sort of bake-off. Yes, go very strong. Spring watch. Well, now. Good. Badgers in Cornwall. There's all your problems solved in one go. I think the main thing about uh, working on this material is that it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, 
John Morton's style is very, very specific. So every um and uh and, and odd word that you hear is not a mistake. It's, it's all there intentionally because John has a fantastic ear for the absurdities of the way that we speak or try to communicate and usually fail to. So you, you'll often hear people in, in, in the dialogue talking what appears to be nonsense, but with great conviction. And uh, only on reflection do you realise that it was complete nonsense, but everyone's left the room thinking they've achieved something. Most of the time they haven't. Um, and trying to get that right is actually a lot harder than it looks. So we spend a lot of time pretty much holding hands in a circle of goodwill, trying to get the uh, the rhythm of the scenes right, because it is rather orchestral. I've said this before about 2012. John writes in a certain way that is very uh, rhythmic, and um, you, if you lose the rhythm of a scene, the whole thing sort of falls apart and you get sort of atonal chords in, in your orchestra. Um, so we're, we're always trying to, to get that better. So you, you basically spend your entire day running lines, running lines, running lines, running lines.